It is Tuesday, January 19th, 2021, and you are tuned into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Today we've got details on a new rookie with the World of Outlaws late models. Dirt Vision is adding Houston Speedway for 2021. We uh, recap round nine of the iRacing World of Outlaws World Championship and more, so let's jump in. With the Chili Bowl behind us now, these next few days kind of feel like the calm before the storm. Uh, the only dirt racing really going on is the start of the Winter Nationals at East Bay featuring Modifieds and Street Stocks. This kind of lull in the action goes through Thursday, uh, but things get going uh, in a serious way starting on Friday. The Lucas Ole Metal Dirt Series season gets rolling, um, and then following the Wild West Shootout, the Wild Wing Shootout will take on Arizona Speedway for three nights of 410 Sprint Cars and IMCA Modifieds. The field for the Wild Wing Shootout is stacked, and that will be an opportunity for a lot of Sprint cars to kind of get tuned up before the Outlaws and All-Stars get their seasons rolling soon. Lucas Late Models will race almost nightly until February 2nd, and then that will take us into Dirt Car Nationals at Volusia. You know, so really these next three days are about the last off days from dirt racing we'll have for a while. I'd say we can officially call the uh, off season over at this point. If you didn't see over the weekend, the World of Outlaws Late Model Series added another rookie to the 2021 class, and this one is a little bit different than the others. Joining Ryan Gustin, Ross Bales, Tony Jackson Jr., and Ryan Scott in the fight for Rookie of the Year is 16-year-old Parker Martin from Georgia. Martin has been a great late model competitor for the last few years and has just 22 super late model races under his belt. According to the story about him on DirtOnDirt.com, Martin's best finish in a super is a fifth in an Ironman Series race at Lake Cumberland. This last weekend with, uh, with the Outlaws wasn't Martin's first time with the series, though. He did make 11 attempts with the Outlaws in 2020 with a best finish of 21st at Charlotte in November. His other starts were at Volusia, Duck River, Smoky Mountain, Lincoln, Williams Grove, and Erie's. Uh, so we've certainly seen a few different uh, parts of the country and some different racetrack types. While he may be really, really, really inexperienced, the kid definitely has speed, and he showed it at Volusia. Back on Thursday for the opener, he qualified sixth in his group, finished third in his heat race, and ended up 24th in the feature after starting 11th. On Saturday night, he went quick time in Group B and won his heat race over Daryl Lanigan and Brandon Shepard. Uh, he then started third in the feature, ran in the top five for a little, uh, little while before fading to 14th at the end. I'm sure he'll catch some flack from some keyboard cowboys this season, uh, but whether you agree with his move or not, he can obviously compete at this level. Uh, you don't beat you know guys like that in a heat race and, and go quick time in your qualifying group uh, with a lot of really, really strong guys uh, if you don't at least have some speed. If he stays out all season, it will certainly be one hell of a learning experience for young Parker Martin. We'll certainly keep up with his progress all season long. As of yesterday, the Dirt Vision Fast Pass just got a little more valuable for 2021. Weekly racing from the reopened Houston Speedway in South Dakota is joining the growing list of tracks and series you can watch at Dirt Vision. Houston's weekly Sunday programs featuring 410 sprint cars and several weekday shows will be streamed live on the service through the season. This includes the World of Outlaws sprint car events along with several NOSA sprint car races. Houston's joins Attica, uh, Knoxville, and Williams Grove at Dirt Vision. Uh, besides the World of Outlaws sprint cars and late models super dirt car series summer nationals extreme dirt car series and a lot more dirt vision is definitely going to have a lot going on this season to see the full, uh, full details on the announcement visit wardofoutlaws.com to find out more information about dirt vision visit dirtvision.com the championship battle between Alex Bergeron and Hayden Cardwell continues to stay tight with the iRacing World of Outlaws Sprint Car World Championship, and last night we got one step closer to crowning a champion. The series took on the virtual Williams Grove Speedway for the ninth round of 10 this season. Bergeron held just a two-point lead over Cardwell entering the night, and the two only had last night and one more round next week at Charlotte to decide who gets the crown. The battle happening a little further back in the field is the fight to stay eligible for next year's championship with Cole Newhoff and holding the 15th and final lock-in spot. For last night's feature, Lewis Hewitt and Tim Ryan started together on the front row with Cardwell and Bergeron coming from row three. There were championship implications on lap one when the top two contenders made contact in turn four. Cardwell tried to get a wheel under Bergeron, but the two came together, sending Cardwell spinning back through the field. Bergeron maintained his top 10 spot, but Cardwell had to restart at the tail. Once things settled out as the race approached halfway, Tyler Shell made a move to the front to grab the lead, and Bergeron was in pursuit in second. Over the second half of the race, Shell kept the lead, but Bergeron was right on his tail tank the whole time. With most of the field right along the bottom, Bergeron just couldn't find a way by, and in the end, it was Tyler Shell, uh, Tyler Shell grabbing his first ever series victory. Bergeron, Cameron Merriman, Kendall Tucker, and Nick Cooper rounded out the top five. Cardwell was able to drive from the back all the way to 12th at the end. 
So now with only one race left to decide the champion, Bergeron heads to Charlotte with a 30-point advantage over Cardwell. There will have to be serious trouble uh, in, the se in the season's final race for Bergeron, or you know, for Bergeron, for Cardwell to have a chance at this championship, but we've seen uh, certainly a lot crazier things happen before. So uh, anything can and will probably happen next week at Charlotte. You can tune in next Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for the series finale live on Dirt Vision. In the last several days, the analytics section of DirtTracker.com continues to expand. I added the five races from the 2020 USAC Silver Crown schedule a while back uh, and recently have been building out the USAC Midget section. I'm up to 11 races from 2020 in the database, uh, which are the most recent 11 races. Uh, and to go along uh, with the race results, the full complement of stats uh, you've come to expect are there as well. My plan is to complete the addition of 2020 races in the coming days and then add the sprint car races as well. I'd like to have them both complete before the USAC season opens at Bubble Raceway Park in February. So help us do some fun preview stuff before the season starts. And then we'll be able to add the win predictions for USAC as well for the upcoming season. So I'm also excited to do some kind of winged versus non-wing comparisons, uh, you know, kind of between Outlaws All-Stars and USAC here. Um, I think, you know, there's going to be a lot of statistical differences. And, you know, even on first glance with the midgets, I'm already surprised by the number of lead changes that happen in those races. Uh, you know, and it looks like the win position, uh, win position breakdowns and similar stats will be very different for these different uh, car types. So I'd be curious to see how kind of all of that breaks down. We'll certainly be talking about that more on the show. We're now sitting on seven different series in the analytics section, and we're up to 492 total races between those seven series. Uh, to see the USAC Midget section, visit dirttracker.com slash analytics slash USAC Midget. There are two items on the streaming schedule today, both happening at Flow Racing. Besides Flow 24-7, they've also got night one of Modifieds and Street Stocks from East Bay Raceway Park for the Winter Nationals. To see the full daily schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Like I said, that's going to be pretty quiet the next two days. Uh, it'll have the Winter Nationals on it and uh, Flow Racing 24-7 on it every day through Thursday. Um, and then things will really get serious on Friday. Uh, that's it for the show today. Hope everybody has a good Tuesday. You can find Dirt Tracker daily on Apple Podcasts. Spotify, Stitcher, or where you get podcasts, please subscribe and leave a review. You can also watch the show every day on YouTube and Facebook. Those likes and subscribes on YouTube are appreciated as well. You can email the show at info at dirttracker.com. I do check those every single day. And you can follow Dirt Tracker on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Dirt Tracker. That's D-I-R-T-R-A-C-K-R. -R -R. You can check out the website for all kinds of cool dirt racing stuff by visiting dirttracker.com. You can follow me personally on Twitter at Justin underscore Fiedler. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.